Coors Light presents Call the Coach with Nick Rolovich, live from Ruby Tuesday in the Moana Lua Shopping Center. Now, here's your host, Bobby Curran, on ESPN 1420 and the Sideline Hawaii app. Good evening and welcome to our Tuesday edition of Call the Coach at Ruby Tuesday's Moana Lua. I am Bobby Curran along with head coach and Nick Rolovich, and uh, we have... Uh, I know this is a thing. I was talking to Corey Batoon this morning. We had him, we had him on. And uh, yeah, one of the things. Early. Yeah, well, it was 6.05. No, he, of, he's an early riser. He is, though. Yeah. I mean, he's, you know who he, he really reminds me a lot, even vocally, well, with I the know. look of Aranda. I know. He has the vocal thing. He yeah. has that. He, I don't think he's quite, uh, you know, no no offense, but I don't think he's quite as funny. Uh, Aranda oh, has Aranda's this, got some humor? Aranda's got a really dry, it's droll it and dry, but, it, you know, he yeah. has that dry wit. Corey's working on that part. but we're, we're still waiting on Dave to get that Nicoa donation in. Uh-huh. I'm still waiting on that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm telling you, he certainly can afford to make it. What's five grand to, yeah. you know, what's five grand to Aranda That's at this right. point? Man, no doubt. Let, let me get to this. One of the things that seems absolutely every coach I've ever worked with will say this, some version of this, the ne- the most important game is the next game. I, I get it because right. it's what you practice, it's what you're approaching. It's the mindset. Yeah, but on the other hand, this one is particularly important. It's the last home game. Turn it up, senior night. Absolutely. It's. I mean, I don't know if you found this even as a player, but – I always find senior night to be a little bittersweet. Uh, you know, it's I, I, I always feel a little sad that these guys who have been such a big part of everybody in the community's life of our four or five years are now gone. I mean, and it's the last time. So I always find it a little bittersweet. But Well, it's so good how Hawaii um, sends our seniors out. Yeah, you know, in every like no one else. Like no I've one else. And, and, and I think that can be, that could be the feeling. Um, but when you go out. After a home win, you know, this, we're, we're playing meaningful football in November at home on senior night. I think this could be a real special way for these seniors to go out at Me home. Me too. And I know they feel that way about it. I mean, what would be better than having a big win on your senior night? I mean, it hasn't always gone that way. But on the other hand, very rarely it has been as critical as this one is in terms of team goals. That's right. You know, senior night, is it's interesting when you're, when you're on a team, when you're coaching, I guess – more when you're playing um when you're playing good football and you're in kind of that groove you don't really let those outside things come into your mind you know i think they understand because your people text you they want tickets and all that stuff but i think um good football teams really just kind of concentrate at the game in hand and i think that's why a lot of coaches talk talk that way let let me get to this unlv that was and someone asked is this because is this a matter this upset by UNLV at San Diego State. Is it more a matter of that UNLV has found something, or is it San Diego State has fallen off and is struggling? Well, I, I think San Diego State has had um, probably Injuries. more struggles than, than they're used to having in the last yeah. few years. But I don't think you can take away the the way UNLV played in that game, the confidence, the energy. Um, you know, and, and like I said, it, I said this today after practice, but it's it's – it's a credit to Coach Sanchez to get his guys to play that way when they don't have the opportunity to go to a bowl game this year. You know, he's he's probably got them playing for the seniors and playing for the future UNLV football and all that stuff. So that's a credit to him. You know, and then there are people, because we had the play-by-play guy on, and we were asking him about some things. And, of course, when you talk to a play-by-play guy, usually they're pretty co-opted mm-hmm. by the program. Uh, whether it be intentional or that just happens because you're a, those are the people you know. Yep. Yeah. So I asked him, "Is what's the level of uncertainty for Tony Sanchez in the job?" And he said he doesn't think it's an immediate problem, but there's ripples mm-hmm. and there's and you know how it goes. If you're not winning, suddenly people. I'll run high. This is true anywhere. If oh, yeah. suddenly you're I not know. winning, I, I when, when you're winning, <laughs> when you're six and one, everybody loves you. Lose four in a row. Check it out. Yeah, try this out. So I, I did, think did, that's did the guy inevitable. happen to say anything about the quarterback situation? Yes. Yeah, he, let's talk about okay, that. Okay, because Mike and I understand the pronunciation of the man's name. It looks like Gilliam, but it's Gillum. And Mike Gillum is a Max, Max Gillum is yeah. a better passer. Than Armani Rogers, and he's a he's a very good athlete, but he's just for whatever reason not the runner that Armani Rogers is. A lot of people are. No, he's really special as a runner. But they, 
he, Russ Langer, who's the play-by-play guy, said he believes that it's almost impossible for them, after he led that team to that upset over San Diego State, it's impossible that he won't be the starter. But no one can guarantee that you won't see some of Armani Rogers, yeah. and I asked Corey Batoon about that, and he said, well, we're preparing for both of them. You have to. You, you, have you to. can't. How could you not? Right. It's interesting. We've been in this situation with UNLV the last, at least last year and possibly the year before where we weren't sure if Armani was going to go last year when we were at UNLV. Yeah. But uh, was it Stanton? That was the QB that ended up right. playing pretty well and, and, and really winning the game for him. Well, obviously, Max Gillum is, is a guy who has improved – uh, fairly dramatically because he was way under the, what he currently is for the season. He, he played six games now. He's a 55% completion guy. But last week at San Diego, he was 16 for 24, which is 67%. So he's, with more playing time, as most quarterbacks will, he's gotten better. Mm-hmm. And he's got a couple of pretty decent wide receivers. One of them, one of the really good ones, is not even listed as a starter, Tylee Collins, who's a I always worry when El- whenever UNLV breaks out a five nine one seventy guy, they're always grease lightning. I mean, they just have yeah. guys that are jets and they're quick. They're, I, mean, they're- I think he's from Georgia or Alabama, and and he's a true freshman, and and he's probably, you know, realized that he belongs at the D one level in college football. So I'm sure he has a lot of confidence. He's made some big plays for him, and and he's definitely a guy to watch out for. What I would say is, in the past, they've had some guys. They've had some six-five type receivers. They've had some really big, rangy yeah. receivers that not this plays year. the ball in yeah. the air really well. Not this year. This year, all, the tallest wide receiver that they have, they got a backup that's six-three. Everybody else is six feet or shorter. So you're not going to have to deal with a lot of red zone guys that can just go up and get it. In fact, you might have Marcus Armstrong Brown might be better at that than anybody they have. Mm. However. They have Lexington Thomas. I don't know what you think of him because apparently I'm, someone just said to us, well, he's not you know, only 72 yards a game. He is, I think he's scary. Because if he gets the 72 yards, you yes, could if see. he gets a step on you, you, he's gone. I don't think many people can catch him. He, nope. And he's a tough runner. Um, he, he seems to always be falling forward. You see that, you know, you go back to the USC game, and you're talking USC, right? Supposedly big, physical, big. yeah talented athletes and and he's fallen forward and he's he's carrying piles and he's he he's he's a he makes four yard runs into six seven yard runs that that end up being very valuable in a drive and i think the amazing thing about that with him is he's five he's listed at five nine one seventy you say when he's getting hit by 240 pound linebackers how is he going forward but he is yep and and when nobody's in the way he's scooting forward he can fly well, I do think offensively they will present their their share of challenges. Um, I, I did want to get to you, because uh, this is, I'm sure, where you pay more attention in some ways is to their defense. Mm-hmm. They have some really active guys in the linebacker core. I mean, a guy like, first of all, Javin White is a, he says, the guy is, is, is doing a little bit of everything. He, he's active. Their safety, Dalton Baker, is 100 tackles. Yep. Is him. that nuts? He, he, 100 he's one of these tackles guys for a free safety. He plays so hard, and he gets people down, which is important. But my, my favorite guy was watching uh, Mr. White play against San Diego State. This is a physical yeah. safety. He's a long body. Um, he's a guy you need to know where he's at on the field. You know, they have a couple of other guys. They have a guy that plays Buck, which is sort of a hybrid defensive end linebacker i guess he's 6'3 265 but this guy has four sacks six and a half tackles another hard playing guy who, oh. who's physical and, and he's tough and uh seems to be a smart player they do a lot of stuff with him as far as at the line of scrimmage and getting off the line of scrimmage but um no he, he shows up too you know i thought who else had a real good game was saw noah wiley from yes. uh, kahuku i thought he played real well in the San Diego state game He's the he's a D tackle. He's six feet, two hundred ninety-five pounds. They got a bigger guy uh, at the nose who is six feet, three thirty. Yeah. So he'll call him short, but don't call him small. <laughs> you can, he'll push you back. And so when I look at the team, I, I look, this team has surrendered a lot of points. What I jumped out at me was the fifty points they gave up to New Mexico. But on the other hand, you have to realize that's option. No, it's like a New Mexico's throwing it around do. a little bit. New Mexico's spreading it out pretty good now. 
Really? Yeah, and, and throwing, so it's not just they're option They're throwing anymore. the ball around a little bit more. So Is that what hurt the Rebels, the throwing or the running? Well, Do you know? I think they made a lot of plays through the air in yeah. that game. Wow. Okay. That's a, that's a different – Yeah. That's a different I think, Bob uh, Davies Bob team. Davies made a, made, a, made a philosophy change and, you know, they're, they're, they're in 10 personnel throwing it around trip. Wow. Balance, yeah. Well, we'll see them next year, I, I guess, yeah. right? Because they've been off the schedule right. for a little bit. So we'll see have, them, Boise and Air Force will get back. Yeah, you'll have a lot to uh, a lot to worry about yeah. next year. But they, let's worry about that next year. <laughs> yeah. Stop worrying about that. You've got that enough on your January plate 1st. now, it would seem to me. If you have something uh, for Coach Rolo, 296-1420 is the number. If you have a question in-house, and keep in mind, you can text it. Uh, you don't have to uh, do it uh, over the phone. If but you if, want. You if you text, you have text. to give your name. Yeah, you got to yeah, give me an interview. I got to know who's texting. Right, well, because otherwise <laughs> no, I won't read it. It's all right. That's easy. We have a I'm special guest in the house. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Who? Um, Tell me who. Chris Hart. No, that's not special. What's special? Stan Gaudian's father came all the way to, from wow, Australia. Where is that? Yeah, you right got there. It. To come see Right Call on. Oi, oi, oi. There we go. All right, good to have him. And because uh, his son is one of my, yeah, I think well, he, was, he was a big hit here when he came. He man. was. I, you know, I love the Australian guys on this team. I love. I still haven't I hope found an Australian more. I don't like. No, me either. Yeah. I still, I'm still searching for that. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure they're out there, but I haven't met one yet. And uh, if you have something you want to talk uh, to Nick Rolovich or text him two nine six fourteen twenty is that number. We'll take our first time out and be right back on ESPN fourteen twenty. This is called the coach. Back to Call the Coach, brought to you in part by No Foods of Hawaii and the HGEA on ESPN 1420. Welcome back to, to Ruby Tuesdays in Moana Lua. This is our weekly edition of Call the Coach with head coach Nick Rolovich. All right, let's get right away to the first text. Although, someone has not followed directions. We need a name on that's the text. Okay. We want a name on the text. With that but, question, it's okay. Okay, yeah, if this one is fine. <laughs> if there's something we don't have to chase you down to your house on, are you com- are you game planning for rain on Saturday? Yeah, we talked about that today, about the possibility. Well, I think, you know, Guy Hoggy said something the morning, this morning in the training room that kind of said it'd probably be a wet weekend, so that'll be, uh, that'll make it even more interesting. All right, that's uh, okay. So, you know, remember, remember, remember June and, and Mouse used to always say throwing in the rain is easier than throwing in the wind. Yes. You'd, you'd always rather do that. So. And I also, he also said that he said, unless his receivers get worried about it, he goes, you have an advantage because the offense has an advantage. They know where they're going. Defense doesn't. So yeah. if, it's, if it's poor footing, advantage offense. You, but, do you subscribe to that? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh. I appreciate that text because that can now I can have a wet. We haven't had a wet ball day in a while. Oh, well, maybe good tomorrow, maybe. Yeah, wet yeah. ball days are fun. You just bring water Does bottles. It affect, would you say that affects some guys more than others in terms of quarterbacks? Um, I try to get in their head. I spray the water in their head and their face on the ball and try to try to anger them and see if they can handle it. I actually got Stan. Stan was very angry with me when I was spraying his hands when he was having to punt the other day or a couple weeks ago, but. So, but he got over it. He got over That's it. Good. He's All got right. a good, good sense of humor. Okay, here, here we go. There's a couple of things. First off, and this is from Tony, who's here. All right, Tony. Will Jelani Tavai be at senior night? Jelani will be at senior night. All right, that's good. I, it wouldn't be right somehow. No. And I, I get he's got other priorities now. He's got to worry about surgery and getting ready for. A whole he's plan. had it. He had the surgery. He's had good it. Good yes. for him. Yeah. So he's on the road to recovery. That's right. Good stuff. And it'll be good to see him. He's, boy, what a career he's had here. And then how about, this is another, this is Stephen who texted this, apparently. How about more short, flat, curl routes, quicker passes? Um, he put his name on. I know, Stephen. <laughs> I'm trying to, I think a lot of the things we do attack the flat defender. Um, curl routes. Uh, and we could probably run a few more of those. But um, I think we try to pride ourselves on getting the ball out of our hand quick. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll look at it, Steve. But we try to live in that kind of world. For yeah, and I think actually, for the most part, you've been pretty successful on those routes. Yeah. I mean, you know what's interesting? I should bring it. <clears throat> you know, we chart all the throws and what section of the field they go. Uh-huh. Um, 
and the completion percentage, deep right, deep middle, deep left. We've got about uh, six under coverage sections that we work on and then the screen section. And and at least uh, before the Utah State game, it was it was very consistent. Now, the deep balls aren't as accurate as the intermediate balls, but as far as um, the areas we attack and the completion percentage in each of those areas is pretty interesting. And it was, it was pretty consistent where we've I've been part of teams where, you know, some guy's really good at throwing to the right flat, but he can't throw to the left flat. You know, it probably has a lot to do with his footwork or, um, you know, some of his mechanics. But um, we've, we've been fairly consistent um, all over the field. One of the things, and I, I just, I wonder, we got a, we got a phone call. Let me take this first. Right. Because Eddie's, Eddie's been waiting. patient. Eddie from McKeeke has been patient. Hi, Eddie. You're on with Rolo. Oh, hi. Thank you very much. Just want to be kind of positive. I think it's a good thing to be in. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of good to be in this position with two games left. We're winning one game. We'll put you in a bowl game. So that's pretty awesome. And you couldn't ask for anything more except for one thing. Could you ask the team to please play like T-Rexes in these next two games so they play a 14th game? And Jelani's my favorite player, and I hope he plays for the Broncos next. Okay, thank you. Bye. All right. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, that would be, would be a bad t be Did he say T-Rex? He did. T-Rex, they probably have trouble catching the ball. I would think. They they short got, arms. Well, short arms. You know, I mean, I, you know that's like, don't send uh, T-Rex over the middle because no. he's got a problem. <laughs> we see that on <laughs> guys with long arms. You might have a lot they of. become T-Rex. Helmet to uh, helmet. I saw an interesting big head. Uh, quote from John or Sue in the paper. He said he feels like your chances of big yak, yards after catch, are sometimes better on the short routes over the middle because sometimes you can make one guy miss and you've got room. And everyone thinks the sideline is going to be your real, is where you get loose. But I think he has had some big plays catching it over the middle. Yes, he has. However, he's also had some drops. Over the middle. Did he talk not, about that? No, he didn't. But I'm <laughs> just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, I'll go back to Eddie real quick and, and you know, his positivity. I I would like to, to, to recognize this team and for, for their expectations and where they put themselves on senior night at home to play a real meaningful game. I, I, I appreciate all of their efforts and all of their buy-in and all of their, um, you know, just – their desire to make the fans and and their legacy um, worth as much as it can be worth. So, um, and I, I'm, I'm excited to go play UNLV for these guys, but uh, I did need to get that out because these guys have been fun to be around, even through the ups and downs. No, and I, I have to say, even, yeah, go, go ahead, give it up to them. I am, um, we always stay at the team hotels, and I just like the way these guys comport themselves. I mean, they're, I, I think they're having fun, but when it's time for business, it's all business. I, I just think it's about, it's the way I kind of imagine, if you're playing college football, how it should be. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good way to think about it. I, how I think about it is, you know, you got this senior class who's going to, you know, walk around Aloha Stadium for the last time this weekend as a, as a, as a player um, at a home UH game. Let me, let me keep going on that, but... Um, these are guys, when they walk out of the stadium and they're done with their career, you're going to be happy they're in your community. They're, they're, you're going to be happy that they're still part of, of whatever, whether it's their neighborhood, their church. Their, they, they're going to bring so, some good things to this world, so I'm happy for them. And, and a lot of them are from here. A lot of them. A lot of them are from here, and they will be a part of this community. Good stuff. We have another text. This is from Jay. Will the defense be ready for no huddle from UNLV? Um, I thought Utah State was a lot of good practice. For Whoa, that. God, I, more than you wanted. <laughs> um, but we, uh, we we do a drill most days where we call it Wiki Wiki, and we go against each other and. We go as fast as we can, just get lined up and see if anybody panics or if there's any issues. But um, we, we try to practice that every week a few times, and uh, I, I believe they, they will be ready. I want to give this just because I, I think, and I feel badly in some ways, because I think Cole McDonald's efforts, which have been substantial, and some of his achievements have been excellent. But I think he, in the community, and we get calls in the morning, I, I think he's being – 
how would I put it? I think he's being undervalued. Uh, let me just tell you this, because people are going nuts about this Max Gillum, who has replaced Armani Rogers. The guy completes 55% of his passes, and he's thrown for 13 touchdowns and eight interceptions. Cole McDonald, on the other part, and the guy, oh, by the way, he's thrown for 1,356 yards. Cole McDonald has thrown for 3,163 yards. He's completed 60% of his passes. He's thrown 32 touchdowns and been picked six times. That's a heck of a number. Yep. It's a heck of a number. He's not a guy that I think he's a confident guy, yep. but he's not someone that's going to blow his own horn. He do, I've never heard him, and maybe he does round his teammates. I don't know if he talks, talks trash. He know, talks I, trash to me, you, and I well, talk trash go. back. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I, I, look, I like that, though, in a way. And, I mean, you got to appreciate he's got a little moxie. He's got about. a little bit of that. But, you know, how many guys in college football this year, you know, 10 games in or 11 games, have thrown for 3,163 yards? How many of them have thrown 32 touchdowns? There's not Probably a lot. Not too many. Nope. But, you know, he, he is a team first guy. I remember, you know, and, and I won't go into all the details, but uh, after the loss at Army, I mean, he is as upset as anybody because he's the type of guy that he wants that game-winning throw on on him. He wants to be the guy to to win the game for the football team. And, and he felt like it was his fault. And I said, no, we, we all take blame in this. And, but he was very upset about that. And, and then you look at his numbers throughout the year and, and some of the hits he took in the Utah State game. And um, that's something I, I've, I learned that Hawaii fans like is a tough quarterback. I think he, he's starting to prove himself as a tough quarterback. I'd like to see him. Um, I don't want to see him get hurt, but I think he can be a little bit more aggressive running the football as far yeah. as uh, how you finish the runs. Um, there was a run last week where he runs out um, kind of right at the sticks, right? And I'm like, did he get the first down? Did he not? You know, at, at some point, he's got to leave no doubt in the rest mind that he got that, whether he's jumping, diving. Did they give him that one? We got it, but yeah. if we didn't, I was going to start yelling. No, but, if he, but he'd probably say, Coach, relax. I got, yeah. <laughs> got yeah. this. All right. Probably exactly what he said. <laughs> so I, I kind of get that. <laughs> but I, once the guy's passed the chains, I want them to be smart. Yeah. I mean, why take big hits if you don't have to? No doubt. There are times when you have to. But I, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not sure. I see some of these hits people are taking sliding. Yeah. You know, and and it's, and it's a hard call for the refs, and there's late sliders, and there's hat sideways slider. You know what I mean? There's all these angles these guys are coming at. Um, By the way, they're killing the quarterbacks on the spots on that. Oh yeah. Well, when they that's say the oh, when they say this is where I don't agree with where the slide started. <laughs> that may be true, but that's hard to prove too, right? No, it is, but I mean, they almost it's say, almost, they almost say let's see where it is and let's back it up two yards. <laughs> let's spot it where he started to think about sliding. <laughs> yeah, right. That's <laughs> yeah, nuts. But that's the rule, and, and that's that, that kind of comes into my, my discussion here is, you know, maybe there's safer times to just dive yeah. and get get that yardage and not get back two yards. Yeah, no, I, I hear you, especially if it's marginal. Yeah. I mean, I, one thing, if you pass the chains by five, you know, pass the marker by five yards, well, then slide. Mm-hmm. But if it's marginal and you need it, well, right. you know, I expect well, that guy to, to go. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I, you, I can think of a, a, any number of uh, Hawaii court, including you. I can remember this. I don't remember the game, but there was a time when Anita, for, and you put your, and you kind of rock this. You rock, You may remember it better than I do, but well, you can put your head down and actually bold over a line that everybody bold him over. You got knocked oh. him on his piester, <laughs> and everyone was like, "Whoa!" And I was like, "I hope you didn't hurt his head." But then I forgot how tough that head is. So I but, remember I mean, running I, out of bounds and and jumping because I was. It made it seem like I was going for the first down, but I was really just trying to save myself from the guys chasing me. <laughs> How honest. No. <laughs> but your, t- your teammates see that. They feel it. They want to be no. part of it. You know, they're the yeah. first ones grabbing you no and question. picking you up. And no, I mean, I, and I think you can see it in the NFL at times. I mean, Roethlisberger is famous for it. We saw one with Marcus. When Marcus actually got kudos from his teammates by throwing a block. 
Oh, I mean, yeah. I, you know, guys, the rest of the team notices that That's stuff. Right. how you become a leader. It's uh, 31 minutes past, which means it's time to take a quick timeout. We'll be right back. We're at Ruby Tuesdays, and this is Call the Coach. You're listening to Call the Coach, presented by Coors Light on ESPN 1420 and the Sideline Hawaii app. Welcome back to Ruby Tuesday's Moana Law. This is Call the Coach with uh, Rainbow Warrior Head Coach uh, Nick Rolovich. I'm Bobby Curran. I did want to get to a couple of things. First, we have a text, and this is, I guess, comic relief. John Ursua cut his hair. Did Cole McDonald? He has not, but I think John Ursua, you know how hair, a good haircut. Yeah. You know, after you've been growing out, good hat, haircut hat changes make, your whole what's mindset. What's that Hawaii bit? It's a local band. Hat yeah. makes the man. Yeah. You know? I mean, come on. He, so. uh... He's all cut up. He's fresh. He's running around good. So that's uh, that's that's good for us. Let, let me let me get to this. Hey, let me ask you this real okay, quick. Okay, go ahead. Do you like the black uniforms or the green uniforms? I like the green. You like the green. But I like the green too. They look good. I like the green, but I'm not a. There are people who get crazy mm-hmm. about the uniform. I'm not that guy. Not that guy. I'm really much more concerned how everybody plays than what they wear. <laughs> Uh, you know, if they play well, I don't give a damn if they wear red. I don't care. Go beat somebody 56 to 10, and I am all in on whatever you're wearing. Oh, good. Let, let's, uh, I want to get to this uh, on UNOV. If, the, if you had to prioritize, which I'm, obviously you guys do, about what your biggest concerns are, if you sort of feel like, okay, handle these two things and we'll be in good shape. What are those two things, or are there more, or is there only one? Well, I think you got to handle their running game. Yeah. I think you got to handle their running game. And, you know, offensively, I think third downs could be a big deal for us this game. You know, we've had games where we're pretty good, we're really good, then we're not very good. And, and This needs to be it, really good. It needs to be it needs better to be, than average. Yeah, I think it needs to be. It's an important deal. Um, they're going to show us some man coverage. They're going to show us some quarters. They're going to, you know, We'll, we'll see what they come out with as far as a, a, a front thought process. But, you know, people tend to do a little bit outside of their normal um, defense. I don't think we're an, an option-style offense where you're going to get a new defense completely. But we have an element of that where people, you can study all week. You can see what they've done all year. And then they come to play us and they end up doing something, you know, whether it's in the front, whether it's in – uh, coverage, leverage, press, non-press, um, all these things are – some people in the last month and a half, really most of the season, we, we weren't sure what we were going to get. We started seeing um, new stuff, and, and it, that's where you have to adjust in the, in the game. On the fly. Yeah. Can, can you, do you have things in your package that you think L, these guys at UNLV could have watched tape from the opening day up until last week, and they've never seen this. Is there anything in uh, your package that you some, would say could be that? Some of it depends on what they do defensively just because of the routes we right. run. So I think it's a little bit hard to, to answer. Um, unless you want me to go try to find some tight ends. And no. Well, no, no. I'm not really there on that. I, I, I'm like, I, I buy into the June philosophy on that. He used to answer that when people would call the show, and, yeah. they, would, and they would say, you think about using tight ends, and he would say, no. <laughs> it was like, no, there was no fleshing it out. There was no explanation. It was like, that was pretty much good for cutting off that conversation. The uh, I, I, Just as one example, I know that there's certain looks. Well, there's one more thing we better be really good at. Okay. Punting. Yes. Stan's dad said. He, he was distracted. He was distracted. He's ordering. <laughs> that's okay. He's ordering. Yeah, that that is the that's going to be critical. <laughs> they have to punt it well. The um, and, and for the most part, he has. He had that one game with a couple shanks, but that was it. That's no, it for the whole year. Pretty and, much. and he's got a range of kicks, yeah. which is um, helpful. Which is helpful. Well, I want to get to this. Lexington Thomas. It is, is scares me. I, does he not scare you? He scares most people. He well, plays I think against, he ought you know? to. Yeah. He's, uh, he's definitely talented and definitely they're going to they're gonna feed him the ball. But I think the Charles, is it Charles White? I think it's Charles White. Um, Charles Williams. Williams, Williams. He, he's out of the Valley. Um, I remember him coming out of uh, high school. Um, he's shown some stuff the last few games, you know. So yeah. he's, he's, they definitely have two guys I'm sure they feel comfortable about uh, giving the ball to. 
One of the things, I mean, just to give you an example, as good as Dayton Fruit has been for Hawaii this year, and Fred Holly's been good, but those two guys have combined for six touchdowns. Lexington Thomas, on his own, has ten. Yeah. That's a big number. And long ones. Yeah. You know, it's a 75-yard. You know, you think about a game-winning touchdown, you don't think about a 75-yard run no. last week, but he, he, he popped it out there and basically won the game. All right, I'm, I'm taking a look. i got a minute or two. So let's let's go ahead and get this one. Who's writing? Is that your writing, Josh? Hmm. I think this is Josh right here. Oh. Okay. No no name on here, though, by the way. Right, at this stage in the season, who is or are the, I don't know, the LP? Up and comers. The up and comers on the team. All right. Can oh, I give, can I? Yeah. You can Corey Bethley. Yeah, I was going to say that, too. Yeah, Corey Bethley's uh, one. Um, can I eat Picanso? Can I? You know, he's he's got another year. He's he's shown probably as much physicality as anybody has on yep. defense. Um, both those guys, both those good guys. tacklers, well, by you, the way. You see, I mean, it, it, you wear pads. It's a physical game. There, there's something to being, um, you know. And, and I, you know, we've heard a lot about tackling, and I don't think it's unwarranted. But it's like, hey, who are the guys that are going to go hit somebody and take them to the ground? Yeah. And those two are those on the two list. are on the list. That's yeah, right. No question. The, another guy who I am anxious to see, and I'm, this is another question that I think is cogent this week, is where are you coming off a bye? How helpful is it? Obviously, after 11 straight games, there were a lot of guys who have been dinged, who have had trouble getting on the field. One of them, and I'm hoping he's going to be closer to 100% this week, is Cheyenne Sanatoa, because oh, I yeah, love that, watching that's him. That's a guy that, that it really helped. Yeah. Uh, Paul Scott, another guy who's been dynamite on special teams for us, um, helped him. Um, and, and then just getting some of their legs back, you know. Yeah. Cause, so our, our schedule, we, we gave them the first three days off last week and then uh, started Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then got into kind of a more of a normal normal uh, game week deal. But Sure. Um, no, it's, I, I, I like bye weeks. Nobody gets mad at me. No. <laughs> Everyone's happy. <laughs> hey, listen, nobody loses a game during a bye week, <laughs> right? right? You, you can't lose. But it's it's good to kind of break up the – because you get in a cycle now. Yeah. From, from Sunday morning when you wake up till Saturday night you walk out of Aloha Stadium or whatever stadium you're playing. I mean, there's a – it's just a routine. And, you know, the people that hurt are your family because you're yeah. not around them, you know, and, and – the players, as much as you love being around them, they probably love being around you. You know, there's a time where, hey, let's just take a break for a few days and find ourselves a little bit. You know, the school is very challenging for our guys as far as the, the travel schedule, so it's good to get focused back in on that. But, um, you know, you really feel the coaches' wives and, and, and the kids are the ones you really kind of try to make sure you have some time for. All right, I want to get to this. Uh, the, this question is – from somebody here. Uh, how bad was Cole bruised after the last game? He seemed to be hit by two or three uh, people on some, some plays. Oh, he took some shots, yeah. no doubt. Uh, I called him the next morning, and he said, you know, Coach, I'm, I'm, I'm a little sore, but I'm all right. So he would have, you know, he didn't sound like he sounded after, uh, what, what game was that where he got hurt? Was that San Jose? Yep. You know, he yeah. was a little bit more, you know, I don't know, Coach, but – it was, and I told him, you know what? Someday you're gonna be old. Your dreads may be gray, right. and you know, in in a, in a in a in a sick way, you're gonna miss that feeling because yeah. it's hard to get it back. No, because everything else that comes with it is gone too. Right. You know, you take it, uh, you take a little pain, but you also have uh, there's some highs involved in that. Coach, this is a text from Jess. Wow, I didn't know you were there. Coach, saw you at the Bruno Mars concert. How did it feel to see him rocking the old school Hawaii gear? It felt well. There's a couple things with that question. First, I mean, how how cool was it to see him rocking all the old black jerseys, white jerseys? You know, I, I wish they were Under Armour so we could buy some and wear them. Yeah. But um, just the hats and and it. But the other thing that 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 was real special about that was to see the amount of people and the amount of, of energy in that stadium. That was that was reminiscent of 
you know, some of the days when you remember it being sold out and a lot yeah. of people in the stands. So the the place still has some magic, and we got we got to get it back. No, I don't know how many there were in, uh, say, uh, BYU when you were a senior. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if that was a sellout, but it was. there were a lot of people in that no. stadium. And, and listen, why can't that happen again for basketball? I mean, for football. And then I'd like, see, football I'd like to see. Well, no, I'd like to see the Stan <laughs> Sheriff Center sold out. Too. Uh, that's I'm, a great. That's a great venue I'm too. The same way on both of those places. I mean, I'd like to see them both full. Um, we uh, do we have time? We're going to have to take a quick timeout. We'll do that and then be right back. We're at Ruby Tuesdays, and this is called the Coach. Back to Call the Coach, brought to you in part by No Foods of Hawaii and the HGEA on ESPN fourteen twenty. Welcome back to Ruby Tuesdays, our Tuesday edition with uh, Rainbow Warrior head coach Nick Rolovich. Uh, we've been talking a little bit about the upcoming game. It is senior night. Uh, I don't think anyone who ever wore that uniform forgets senior night. No, no, you don't. You don't. You don't forget the seniors you, uh, you know, were able to, to kind of go out with. Um, there, there's going to be a lot of emotion. You know, we, you know, with with the passing of Vince Monowai, um, you know, we're going to. Hopefully, do something special for him that day before the game, and senior night, and bulls on the on the line, and you know the pineapples on the line, no doubt. big golden yeah. pineapple. You know what's cool is, uh, you know, I think we have all the rivalry trophies we're in if we can win this one, because we yeah. have the cutter trophy, we got the paniolo, um, and if we can get the pineapple, that'd be, that'd be, be pretty nice. good. That'd be nice, nice to have seniors the, to go out with. Sure, nice to have in the trophy case yeah. too. Yeah, it looks good. Let, let me let me get to this now because I I don't know what it will be in terms of a crowd. I think senior night always is maybe plus three thousand it seems to me, but I some of the crowds have not been what we'd hoped for. But I'll say this about the people who come, man, they get engaged. There, it's been loud. It's been fabulous We've in terms of the participation of people who come to the stadium. And 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 I could I don't notice, but I hope. Um, you know, there was a lot of talk in the off season. How can we make the experience better for people um, in the parking lot, in you know, uh, in the stadium, inside the game? And I hope there's been some positive changes. Um, but there has been some times where that stadium is is pretty dang loud for whatever we've had in it. I, I thought maybe we could take a minute, as it's we won't have a chance to do this again before senior night, or chat with you at length. But I'm just wondering if you can just comment. On, it, on some of the seniors that you'll be uh, saying goodbye to? Well, O-line, you know, Kiwi Chunk, guy who is, gosh, he's got so much fight in him. He, he's an unbelievable teammate. Um, shouldn't be, be able to do what he's doing, but he, he is because he, 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 he cares about this team and, and, and just what he stands for is, is, is pretty strong. Uh, Stubbs, you know, for him to, to have a couple touchdowns his last senior year and, he, and and also going to play some more for us the rest of the year. He's he's really just committed himself. Tristan Kamaka. It's hard to play behind John Ursua. No, no doubt. Yeah. But but TK has been I think probably um, a part of a real large part of John John's improvement as an understanding of the offense. TK's got a very bright mind um, and understands it very well. So we're going to miss him. Uh, Marcus Armstrong Brown I think has committed himself to his senior year. You know and and. You know, I think he's found some. Uh, he he found some belief in himself that he wanted to finish out the his senior year the right way. <clears throat> Been productive. Uh, you know, one of the guys, and I think he's a great story. Hmm. Uh, Zeno Choi. Great story. Uh, great, oh man, great, great I mean, kid. a guy who people said out of Kaiser, he no, nah, he's not a Division One kid. He just never he never listened. They didn't listen. But you know that that's the 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 beautiful part of the of the local kid, right? It, that stuff doesn't matter to them. They just love playing football and they love being with their boys and they love, um, you know, doing, you know, something as a, as a unit. And, and they're just a joy to coach. You know, Teva's played a lot of football for us. Yeah. Well, who else are we losing? Well, Manu Hudson Rasmussen. Manu. Manu's had been safety, nickel, played some corner. Um, good athlete that, you know, decided to come try to, you know, took a chance leaving, leaving the last school he was at, going to JC and, um, I think it's really found it's really fit in and really found a home uh, in in Hawaii. Uh, any other ones on? Yeah, there? there's a guy who John and I got a call. I think it was sometime early last year, and and someone asked us, "Hey guys, we uh, 
could you do us a favor? Because Noah Borden had some family thing. I said, could you take him from the airport? And we were driving down to San Diego. So we said, sure. We got in the car. We had a chat, a three-way talk the whole way down. I, we got out of that car. I thought, I, that's one of the most impressive young guys I have <laughs> ever <laughs> met. Ever. Ever. You'll probably ever meet. Uh, you, you can't and say something bad fabulous. about him. He's fabulous. He's a great team leader. Um, he's very um, involved in, in, in his culture, in, in the Hawaiian culture, and has been a real kind of uh, conduit to that, to some of the guys who don't quite understand it or haven't been around it very much. He's he's not afraid to, to open up and, and teach people about it. And I think it's a... It's an important factor in your acclimate. Uh, I lose that word all the time. Acclimation. Acclimation to Hawaii. Go. Yeah. That's what I'm used to. A lot of C's. <laughs> yeah. uh, you uh, know, but he's, uh, is it, does he have? And I don't know. You probably have a better idea what the criteria are. For a guy that it seems to me that to make it in the NFL as a snapper, you've got the first thing you have to be is unbelievably consistent. Yep. And he's got that. He is. is. Is does will he get a look? Here, will here, he get into someone's camp? Here, here, I, I, you know, and I saw this today. Okay. Noah's a long snapper. He's on punt and he's on field goal PAT. Yeah. Okay. We're doing kickoff team, and he's off to the side, and when our kickoff team they kick the ball and they're sprinting down the field to cover the kick. He's on the sideline getting his conditioning with the kickoff team. Wow. Okay, and he's done that all year. Today I saw um, Wyatt Tucker, um, kind of our backup long snapper or, or a guy that can do it for us in the future, joining him on that on that journey. So he's been such a great role model. You walk into film, and I walk in down the left side all the time, and Noah's always like in the third row, second, third row, and he's always in the farthest left seat. And you see him; he's got his iPad, and he's watching. He's watching uh, NFL long snappers yeah. before the meeting. Where other guys, right, they're on their Snapchat and all this other stuff. He's he's watching NFL snappers. And, oh, and, what can he learn? What can he learn? How can he get better? He's an unbelievable husband and father, and, and I think he's just he's going to be a positive deal as he keeps moving on through life. And maybe he'll get a little uh, a stay in the NFL. So. I think it's possible. Yep. Okay, it's time. we got to go right now to our Pay It Forward deal. Someone is going to have $100 and is encouraged to find a way to make that grow for whoever. And uh, go ahead. Why don't you want to reach in and grab? I'll read it for you. Yeah, shuffle. Mm. If you come up with Eunice Wan, I'm going to freak. <laughs> Kavika Mitchell. Where's Kavika? Right here. Well, Kavika, come on up, brother, and get your money. All right. Well done. All right. Good job, buddy. You'd let us know when you come up with a plan. Really good stuff. We are. Uh, we have just a few seconds. I uh, did want to wish everybody and you and the seniors absolutely the very best. I'm hoping we get a great crowd for you. I'm convinced that the bye week in this case is going to help uh, and that people are going to be ready to go, and I'm looking forward well, to it. They better it. be. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they, they better, better be. be. You know, this is uh, – it's coming down to the end here. We've done a lot of things. We've played a lot of football. And like I said, I think it's to, to have – and R.J. Hollis, you know, came and spoke to the team today um, after practice. And he uh, he said something. He said, you know, you guys don't may, may not realize it, but two bowl games in, in three years around here is, is something that, you know, I, I worked my butt off for, for one opportunity. And we yeah. just barely snuck in there and, and got a win. He said, some of you guys are going to be able to have put two on your resume. And, and he said, it's really just a, I think he said, a slow creation for a new expectation or something like that. And, but he was very, he, he's a great speaker to our team. He could talk to our team every day. He's so passionate and says the right things. So I think he really hit the guys uh, in their heart with, with how he was talking. Good stuff. And before we sign off, Kavika Mitchell won the 100, has donated it back, back to, to the program. All right. Give it up. Thanks, Kavika. Uh, good job. And uh, that is going to wrap us up. Where does the time go? Thanks uh, to everybody who helped us uh, tonight. Cy, good job. Chris Hart, everybody, the cast of thousands, Josh, and uh, his new assistant. Uh, all good, everybody. Thanks so much for coming, everybody. I'm Bobby Curran for Nick Rolovich, and this has been another edition of Call the Coach. You've been listening to Call the Coach with Nick Rolovich, live from Ruby Tuesday in Moanalua, presented by Coors Light. Also, mahalo to No Foods of Hawaii. Say yes to no, the HGEA. We are HGEA strong.
City Mill, big on help, big on savings, proud to be local. Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union, Xanthacin, the safe anti-inflammatory for health and longevity, available at GNC. The Hawaiian Airlines Bank of Hawaii MasterCard, POP Fishing and Marine. Here, glory, we got it. On Pier 38, this has been another exclusive University of Hawaii sports presentation on ESPN 1420 and the...